Okay, hey legends, um, this lesson is on the carbon cycle and here are the do first questions to kind of get you started and uh, preparing you for this lesson. Go ahead and give them a try. Here are the answers. This is what you should have gotten. Um, go ahead and pause here if you need to take a look at those more closely. So today's lesson, we're gonna explain how organic compounds are cycled through an ecosystem through something called the carbon cycle. Um, this will be on your common assessment and carbon cycle is gonna be one, is gonna be a lesson that I in particular feel very strongly about um, because it kind of ties into reasons why we need to take care of our environment. So let's start with a little bit of review. Um, an organic compound is anything that is, na is a naturally occurring compound that contains carbon and um, a other elements as well. But the main thing is that it has to have carbon in it to be considered organic. Um, organic compounds are found everywhere. They're in our proteins, carbohydrates, they're even in our own DNA. So pretty much anything that is a biotic factor is going to have organic compounds in it. So it's really something that we uh, um, are going to kind of focus on when we talk about the carbon cycle. The other thing that I want us to review before we get going into the carbon cycle is something called the law of conservation of mass. And this should be somewhat review for use from sixth grade. The law of conservation of mass says that matter is neither created nor destroyed. Um, you can kind of think of this almost like the water cycle. For example, um, you know, even though this picture here is of the carbon cycle, when you think about the water cycle, water doesn't get created or destroyed. Um, when you learned about the water cycle, you learned that you know, water is either going to be in liquid form in lakes, rivers, and ponds, and the water will evaporate, then the water can be in gas form in clouds, then it will go into liquid form again, and it keeps going and going and going. No one is creating new water. No one is destroying new water. The water that is there is the water that's always been there, and it just keeps going around and around and around. Well, carbon, the element carbon, does the same thing. Um, so carbon has to travel around the ecosystem in a cycle because it can't be destroyed. And the law of conservation of mass tells us that carbon, just like water, can't be destroyed. Um, so if you weighed all, if you weighed all of the carbon um, in the ecosystem uh, and you know you got how many pounds it weighed, for example, um, at any time later in the ecosystem, if you weighed that same amount of carbon, it, that number would be the same because we can't create or destroy new carbon. It's always gonna be the same amount there. So where does the carbon go? Now here is where we begin into the carbon cycle. If it's cycling around and around, um, the first thing that we have to keep in mind is that we have uh, plants which use carbon when they are doing photosynthesis. So carbon dioxide is in the air, which we know, um, we happen to breathe it out, and then plants will use carbon dioxide during photosynthesis. So now carbon um, is now gonna be in the plant's tissues. So how does the carbon get out of the plant's tissues? Well, when it gets eaten by a consumer. Um, and I have a picture of a deer here, but this represents the whole food chain. So carbon will go all the way up to the food chain. When the deer eats the plant, the carbon is now going to be in the deer's tissues. And then the deer will eventually die and when it does, decomposers will then unlock the carbon and all of the other elements from the deer's or the consumer's tissues, and it will recycle that back into the earth um, during decomposition. So, and then the other thing that I don't have a picture of here is that eventually these materials here, after m many, many, many thousands, hundreds of thousands of years, um, maybe even millions, and uh, after a lot of pressure of being in the Earth's crust, all of these uh, decomposed and released carbon elements can then turn into something that we call fossil fuels. And fossil fuels um, are things like oil and coal that humans burn to get energy. And guess what? When we burn these fossil fuels, we can't forget that this stuff has carbon in it. So when we burn it, the carbon is gonna go back into the air and it's gonna be in the form of carbon dioxide. So now the carbon is in this gas molecule of carbon dioxide. So the cycle of carbon 
goes like that over and over and over again. And there are some other pathways of it that we'll explore too. Um, so here's the a paragraph that describes fossil fields. I will go ahead and read this to you, but feel free to pause and read it yourself. So when decomposers break down dead plants and animals, much of the carbon stays in the ground. Today, almost 99% of all carbon on Earth has been locked up deep within the Earth. Humans use carbon dioxide stored in the Earth in the forms of fossil fuels, like coal and oil. When fossil fuels are burned, they also release carbon dioxide, or CO2, into the atmosphere. By burning the Earth's store of carbon, mankind is able to create the energy needed to operate our communities. Electricity and gasoline, um, for example, come from fossil fuels. However, we must be careful. By releasing more carbon into the atmosphere than is being locked up, we risk causing damage to the delicate carbon cycle, ruining the balance of an ecosystem. Um, so this is the part where I really care a lot about this. So the fossil fuels that we are using, for example, oil and coal, um, we are burning them up much more quickly, like humans are burning it up like that um, in a snap, and uh, it takes millions of years for these things to be created. So eventually, we really need to start focusing on other ways that we can get energy besides oil and coal um, to make sure that we are not putting too much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and making the carbon cycle very unbalanced. We don't want to ruin this natural cycle. So um, just to check yourself, what is the name of the organic compound that is found in the atmosphere? Or we could also say carbon compound. You should have answered CO2. What process absorbs carbon dioxide from the atmosphere? You should have answered B, photosynth oops, photosynthesis. Um, how is carbon recycled back to the Earth's soil? The way that carbon will get recycled back is through the process of A, decomposition. What do decaying, which means decomposing, plants and animals produce? What happens when decomposers decompose this uh, dead biotic material? It will, oops, it will produce fossil fuels. And here's the definition of fossil fuels that I'd like you to write down and add to your notes. It's the carbon dioxide stored in the earth like coal and oil that humans burn to get energy for communities. Um, and specifically the carbon, the carbon that is stored. And when you burn it, it it's going to be in the form of carbon dioxide when it's in the atmosphere. So this factory here represents um, factories that will uh, work to turn those fossil fuels into like gasoline and coal, or coal and also like produce electricity for the community. So, this is how fossil fuels are used. So um, you have some video notes on your notes that, that go with this handout. Um, and there's also a brain pop video on the carbon cycle that is um, really helpful in understanding all the different parts of it that I recommend you watch. Here are the video questions. Go ahead and pause here if you have not answered them yet. And we'll check our answers in just a moment. This last one says, if we burn too many fossil fuels or cut down too many trees, we will be messing with the cycle of the carbon in the ecosystem, which can cause global warming and also rising coastlines. Um, here's a picture of the carbon cycle. Um, just be very familiar with this diagram. Besides the pathway that we talked about earlier, where humans are burning fossil fuels and carbon dioxide gets released, carbon gets released into the atmosphere, also realize that plants can also absorb that carbon dioxide, but they'll also release a little bit too in a process called respiration because of the mitochondria in the plants. So that's going to release a little bit of carbon dioxide. Also when animals, when animals eat those plants um, and the animals also breathe out the carbon dioxide, so carbon gets released that way. So there's another smaller cycle here. Um, and even carbon dioxide in decaying matter and in the waste, like the waste products, um, is also going to have carbon. So anything that this, for example, raccoon is going to excrete will also have carbon in it. 
This here will be on your quiz, so you need to make sure that you're very familiar with this diagram and being able to fill it in and explain what's happening at each step. So here's some questions you should try on your own. What are two ways carbon dioxide is released back into the atmosphere? Um, using the picture on the previous slide, find three different pathways that carbon takes. So find like three circles or cycles that you can find in that uh, picture and um, describe the way that carbon goes. And then lastly, why do we need to be careful when burning fossil fuels like coal and oil? What, um, what are the things we should be concerned about? And here's an exit ticket question that you should try to answer. Okay, let's go over this last answer. So which one of these following things is going to be correct for the carbon cycle? So first go through the Roman numeral questions. Plants take in oxygen and release carbon dioxide. Um, that's not true. They, plants do not take in oxygen, so they take in carbon dioxide, so this is backwards, so one is definitely wrong. Um, two, animals release carbon dioxide through respiration. That's true. Three, decomposers build carbohydrates. Nope, decomposers break things down. So the answer is going to be um, two, which is going to be answer choice B. All right, guys, so um, hopefully this helps you uh, understand the carbon cycle a little bit better, and um, good luck studying.